Art Nerds. Today we're taking a look at the Koi CAC watercolors. These are the creative art colors. So these are their sparkly set. This set just came out. I picked it up at David Art Supply, which is a New Orleans area art supply store just off of Severn. I saw them online, um, but I'm happy to pick them up in person. I did pay a little bit more than you would probably pay. I paid $29.49 for the 12 color set which is not the greatest deal. So here on this channel, I do have a few other unbox and swatch videos where we take a look at sparkly watercolors, but I was really excited about the Sakura Koi CAC colors because I have used Sakura Koi watercolors for several years for my convention watercolors. So today we're gonna do an unbox and swatch. We're gonna take a look at the CAC Creative Art Colors watercolors. We're also gonna take a look at the 30 color set. And if you guys are looking for a more in-depth review of Koi's regular watercolors, keep an eye on this channel. I have a link for that as well. So, inside this box we have a little bit of information. Pocket Field Sketch Box includes size 6 round medium refillable 4mm water brush, dabbing sponge, molded palette and lid, compact and portable, colors formulated to blend easily. Water brush instructions. Remove black cap from reservoir barrel and fill with water. Screw brush on barrel counterclockwise. Gently squeeze water through brush fibers. Brush care and caution. Rinse the brush to keep it clean. Drain the barrel and dry the brush tip if it is not used for a long period of time. And that's actually excellent advice that I haven't encountered elsewhere because I have found that these water brushes do actually grow algae. Um, let's see. Contain small parts. Keep out of reach of children. And then the colors inside are silver, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent magenta, light gold, fluorescent orange, fluorescent violet, deep gold, fluorescent red, fluorescent blue, copper, fluorescent rose, and fluorescent green. I'm actually pretty pleased with this color selection because I was concerned that the CAC colors were going to be just metallics of their existing palette. So for me, this was actually a really good buy because it seems like it actually complements the three color palette with no duplicates. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed. And mine is held with tape. So I'm just going to, and it comes in the, it seems like they've kind of revitalized the 12 color box. In fact, I have one of the original 12 color boxes. I'll go grab that. So this is my original. Koi 12 watercolor set. This is a fairly old box. As you can see though, they are both made of plastic. This one has a sticker on the front and you can tell the set has gotten a lot of use. I've also kind of gutted it. So I don't actually use this set anymore, although I could clean it up and continue to use it. It's not actually in as bad shape it looks. So this is the older box. This is the new CAC watercolors box. So we've got fluorescence, we've got our sponge, we've got our water brush. Looks like same layout as the old brush, just different color selection. And then I also have my Koi Watercolors 30 color box here. And this one does not get used very often because it lives in Luling, Louisiana. Actually, no, I lied to you guys. This one's a new one. Oh, they've actually changed things out a little bit because they have color numbers here. I'm gonna go dig up my older one and we can see if this one compares with that one. But the focus of today is on the CAC set. So as you guys can see, we have some metallics here. We only have four metallics and the rest are fluorescence. And with watercolor and fluorescence, fluorescence are not, um, they're not traditional for watercolor. They are typically dye based. They are typically not light fast. They are typically not archival. So when you paint with fluorescence, you do need to make accommodations and you do need to store and maintain your paint in an appropriate setting. So fluorescence are kind of a new addition to the world of watercolor. Um, the Moz Art Como Rebi set also comes with several fluorescents and you guys can check out my review for that by clicking here. And um, I believe Boca Undo makes a fluorescence set for their Gansai watercolors. And I think, 
I think Kurataki does in their Gansai Tommy set. So this is just another addition to the fluorescent watercolor options by another Japanese brand since Sakura is a Japanese brand. So I look forward to swatching these guys for you and talking about the colors. And I have on hand one of my really old fine text sets. I'm also going to go grab my Kuratake Gansai Metallics because I do have the Starry Sky set. So we can do kind of a little comparative swatch today. All right, so now I've got a little bit of everything. We have the Gensai Tombi Starry Colors. We have the old Fine Tech, some of their pearlescent colors. We have the CAC watercolors. So as you guys can see, this is the smaller of the Sakura of America water brushes. It contains a black cap. What you do when you're traveling is you keep them separated. Um, you fill this up with water and then you use this to cap it. So you do want to hold on to this. The little sponge can be used to lift watercolor, but it can also be used to scrub the color off your brush. I like to bring paper towels though. In the larger set, you get the sponge kind of embedded into the set and it functions the same way. You fill the reservoir, you cap it off for travel because it's not big enough to travel all in one piece. I also found my older, although not nearly used, set of 25 Sakura Koi watercolor. You guys can see it is almost identical to the 30 set. The 30 set just has a few more colors. So what I'm going to do for you guys in another video is I'm going to swatch this set out and we'll talk about the colors available in that set. So we're going to begin with swatching these colors. I'm actually not going to, well I could use the water brush. I do also have a cup of water and some regular watercolor brushes handy. So I went ahead and I put some water in the water brush. Actually I should put some more water in the water brush. And if you don't have a faucet, you can do that just by submerging it in a cup of water, which I'm not going to demonstrate because it's already making a mess, but you can submerge it in a cup of water and squeeze to remove the air bubbles. So I have my water brush filled just in case, and I'm going to be swatching today on Canson Biggie XL watercolor paper. I'm going to move this gross thing out of the way. And if you're looking for more information about this watercolor set, please do check the description below. I'll have links to everything down there. And I am going to go grab a permanent marker so that we have something to do the opacity test with. So I have here a Sakura Pigma Micron. Not as thick as I would normally like for my opacity test, but that's okay because it doesn't have to be pretty. I am going to put several lines on this paper so we can get an idea of how opaque these colors go down. All right, so now I'm going to use a synthetic brush and I'm just going to put a little bit of water on each of our colors. We're gonna pre-activate these. And something I'm gonna be interested in seeing with these fluorescents is since I told you guys earlier, fluorescents are typically not pigment based. There aren't too many pigmented colors that'll fluoresce. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see whether these are dye based or pigment based and whether or not they have a problem with reactivation 
once they've been initially wet. So let's see. I believe this is silver. It says silver, but it is very white. It looks very much like a pearl. So we're going to do a mass tone swatch here and it seems to be very translucent. And now I'm going to do a gradiated wash. So we're going to start at full intensity, which I know is very hard to see and I apologize for that. And we're going to wash it down. I'm going to do that with all of the metallics in this set and then I'm going to go get a fresh cup of water. So this is their gold. This is light gold. And that is also very, very translucent, not a lot. And I did pre-activate it and I am trying to pick up as much pigment or as much particles as I can. And there's just not much to it. Next we have deep gold. Little more color there, but still not much opacity, not much oomph. So if you're looking for opaque metallics, so far the CAC watercolors are just not it. Now the copper does have a little bit more opacity, a little more coverage to it. The other ones were really, really kind of unimpressive and weak. This one has some actual strength to it. I'm going to go ahead now and do a mass tone swatch of each color underneath the gradiated swipe. And that silver basically gets lost on the page. I'd like to see it on an opaque paper, but I don't think it's going to perform much better. All right, so those are our four metallic colors. I'm gonna go clean my cup out. I'll be right back. Also going to grab a different brush just because glitter has a tendency of getting into everything in the world. Still synthetic though. But it does seem like Sakura has done a little bit of repackaging. Perhaps they've made their Koi pan-based watercolors available open stock because every color in this and in my new 30 set has a color number, whereas prior sets did not. So if you ran out of a certain color, you just had to replace the whole set or you could fill it up with a tube watercolor. Apologize for that shadow. These are incredibly fluorescent. It's like painting with highlighters. So if you are looking for very fluorescent watercolors, the CAC may have you covered. And these are very transparent. No, normally, I have found that Koi watercolors have a tendency to be a, be a bit opaque. 
due to the optical brighteners that they use to make the colors a little brighter and more enticing in the package. But these are fairly transparent. They also don't seem to separate out into individual dies, but they're already clouding up my water. So I do suspect there is the use of optical brighteners, which would make sense given how transparent these colors are. missed a purple. Just watch it right there for you guys. Sorry about that. Now these are also supposed to be specially designed for blending and mixing. So once our opacity test has had a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of color mixing, color play. And we'll see if we can't get these colors to bleed and run and generally make a mess. I'm also interested in mixing them with the original Koi watercolors. and seeing how they interact. Now I'm really doing a lot of scrubbing and a lot of pushing because I'm trying to pick up as much pigment as I can. And they're still fairly, fairly weak. So I'm going to let these dry and then I'll check in with you guys with the next portion of our test. Alright, so this hasn't dried entirely. I am in Louisiana though, so it will probably take a while to dry. I'm going to try and remove it without spilling too much paint, getting too much crossover. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to set this over to the side. We're going to take a look at that 
in a while. The next thing I want to do is a brand to brand comparison. I'm a little limited here because I'm in Louisiana, so I don't have my full artistic setup all ready to go. But I do have And I thought I had some of my fine tech gold pans, but I don't. So this may have to be a review that we come back to another time and redo when I have the Como Revy set as well. But for today, we're just going to swatch the metallics. So I made three lines, one for each brand. We're going to do the CAC colors at the top, the fine tech, and these are the older fine techs. I do have a few other fine tech sets, and if you guys are interested, I can review those as well more in depth. And then the Gensai Tombi Starry colors. And most metallic paints utilize um, mica in order to give them that metallic finish, although Daniel Smith's Premium Tech colors do actually use um, the pigments from the semi-precious stones themselves. So say amethyst, for example, has a beautiful, lovely glitz to it. And that's from the amethyst. So we're gonna start with the CAC and we're starting with their silver. So I wanted to get, or I want to get a good amount of pigment on the brush. Really want to try and give these as much of a chance as possible. Now something you guys might find interesting is that the use of gold and silver beginning with gold and silver leaf in fine art, begins with the Japanese, um, and using sort of gold leaf in traditional Japanese sumie paintings isn't an uncommon thing, and it can make for some really beautiful pieces. So these sort of gold and silver watercolors are not unusual, and Renaissance masters would also use gold and silver in their paintings. So some of the really beautiful paintings of the Madonna and Child, for example, do utilize gold that has been suspended in a solution. And you can even buy gold and silver paint, um, particularly the gold paints from Jerry's Artorama. And it's just gold powder in gum Arabic. So next we're using or we're gonna comparative swatch this Fine Tech Iridescent set. And these did not really have the benefit of pre-activation, so I'm gonna go ahead, put a swatch of water on each. And I'll do that for the Gansai Tombi as well. And I'm really trying to pick up as much powder, as much pigment as I possibly can. And that's one of the completely transparent iridescents. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see this on camera. You would, however, see it in the commissions that I choose to include metallic accents in. And really that's any commission or mini watercolor I think would benefit from it. Or if I happen to know the commissioner enjoys a lot of glitter and glam, I'll try to add some in. I basically will find any excuse I can to use iridescents and glitters in my paint, but I don't use them on Kara pages because those are intended for reproduction. And these sort of metallic paints while they're beautiful in person and you can get some really nice striking effects with them, they don't work well for reproduction work. All right, so that was the Fine Tech set. 
Now we're gonna do the Gansai Tombi Starry Colors. And this is a six color set. I was messing with it the other day. So we're starting with blue gold, red gold, and I did pre-activate it a little, but these are very quick to activate. They use a different binder than Western watercolors and are a little more soft and uh, gelatinous in that it feels like they use gelatin or glycerin as a binder. And traditionally, Gansai watercolors do use an animal hide sizing or glue as their binder. So. Gelatin would not be far off. Next, uh, so champagne gold, yellow gold, red gold, blue gold. Next is light gold. And then finally, white gold, which is really more like a pearl. And I'm going to give these swatches a chance to dry as well. Alright, so just like with our other set of swatches, I'm going to set these over to the side to dry since I'm in Louisiana and <laughs> things will take a while. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just slap a lot of paint and water on the paper and see whether or not we have a problem with colors blending, transferring, and moving. So I'm going to start by kind of doing some wet into wet stuff with the metallics. And start moving in with some of the fluorescents. It would be really interesting to test the light fastness on these. And I have a goal over on my Patreon. If we can reach the $500 a month mark, then I'm going to do a massive multi watercolor light fastness testing. And I have a proposal up on the blog for how I'd like to go about approaching that. And I plan on documenting and sharing everything with my patrons. So if you're interested in how some of these colors keep their, maintain their light fastness, you're going to have to head on over to patreon.com slash natosoup and join the art nerd community. So right now the colors are very pretty. I am getting some buckling issues, but that is not the fault of the paints. It's the fault of the painter. And you can secure that with a bulldog clip and that won't happen. Some interesting granulation going on with these fluorescents. That's something I really enjoy about fluorescent colors is that they have, tend to have really neat granulating effects as the intense bright color settles into the texture of the paper. Now we're gonna try adding in some of our metallics. And 
thing I was tipped off about this set by my friends Bomber Bee and Kabocha. So I want to thank you guys for, you know, sharing this with me, showing me the new thing that Sakura Koi has introduced. For more information about this product, you can check the description below. I'll include competitive pricing and links to where you can get your own. I wouldn't recommend paying $30 for this set, even if that's the market price, which I'm not saying it is, but even if it is the market price, I wouldn't recommend paying $30 for this set because there are other sets like the Como Rebi set, which includes 40 colors and has metallics and it has fluorescence and that's like $26 over on Amazon so and I think it performs a little bit better than this set here so I'm gonna let this hot mess dry and we're going to check in on it and do another layer on top of it So this had an hour to dry, but because we're in Louisiana, it had, it's still wet over on the sides. So it had time to dry. That's just the nature of the South, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and do another layer. And I'm testing for a few different things. I... I'm testing to see whether or not the paints will lift, whether or not, because it's looking like, yes, they will lift. And I'm testing to see whether there's going to be any areas of resist or um, if they'll reactivate, turn muddy. I have a feeling that this entire set is really designed to be used kind of towards the end or maybe used sparingly. Now I am getting a little bit of muddiness to the color, but we'll see when it dries. I'll move this sponge because I'm not really going to use that anyway. And of course you all know the best way to test something like this is with a field test. And I'm not gonna pretend like I can mix what I need from a bunch of fluorescents and a bunch of metallics. So I think what I'm gonna do for the field test is I'm gonna use one of the other Sakura of America watercolor tests because I feel like the CAC colors are designed to be a complement to their existing sets rather than, you know, a mixing set or a replacement. So rather than a standalone full palette, I feel like this is more of a, an addition. Something you would buy to kind of round out your collection of watercolors, that sort of thing. And I feel that way about any sort of fluorescent or metallic set. Now, you guys can see getting some muddiness. getting some resist over here. Now I'm going in with some of the metallic cop colors. And 
and we're not really getting any coverage at all with these metallic co colors. They really just add kind of a hint of iridescence. Honestly, the white one, which is silver, according to the package, but I think of it as a pearl. This would be really good to mix in with your other colors to add iridescence, just like a little hint of iridescence, rather than like to do, you know, silvery accents. I would use it to add iridescence to existing colors. And I also would recommend that you guys, if you were to paint with this whole set as a whole palette, I would recommend you do your fluorescence first and then do your pearlescent or mix the two together to make an iridescent. Because if you paint with a lot of water or if you try to layer watercolor on top of your metallics, they do tend to turn everything to mud. So I'm going to let this mess dry. I think the granulation though is really cool. It's a cool effect. But for those of you who like smooth washes of color, this might not be the type of watercolor for you. And I do like how fluorescent some of these colors are. Very bright, very bold, vivid color. All right, so I'm going to let this dry. And while that dries, I wanted to talk to you guys about the swatches from earlier. They have finally had a chance to dry. And I'm not working in quite a color accurate environment. So um, the colors are really, really vivid. That yellow is fluorescing on my camera a little bit more than it is real life, in real life. And the hot pink and the hot red are not quite as fluorescent as they are in real life. They're actually a little brighter in real life. Then over here, we have our metallic swatching. Starting with the CAC colors, they did end up drawing the darker gold and the copper did end up drawing a little bit more opaque than I had expected, but the silver is still pretty transparent. I think it would make a good additive. Then we have the fine tech colors. You guys can see some of the iridescence in there. They're also fairly transparent from this set. Then we have the Kuratake colors. You guys can see they actually get pretty opaque when they're caked on. but all of them are shiny and glittery. All right, arty friends. So these have fully, fully dried and I'll have to show you these in better, more realistic lighting. But this is what we're interested in right now. And it's still wet. I've been gone for about an hour but it's still wet because that is how Louisiana rolls. Ooh. I'd left a lot of gold in the barrel. Ooh, wow. Some areas really are still wet. So as I'd mentioned earlier, there really isn't a lot of opacity in these fluorescents. You will get some layering and some glazing. I would recommend, ooh, let's see, check out how much it actually picked up. Let's see how that goes down. I would recommend working with any of these colors towards the end of your painting session. So I would try to build up to these colors rather than use them the entire time. I would also recommend you use them as an accent, 
but for my field test piece, I'm going to try and use them as, not as my blending colors, but certainly as the focus, and we'll see how well they hold up. Some of the colors do seem to layer a little muddy, and I am getting some resist in the areas where we put down the metallics. I would definitely be interested in seeing what the larger CAC sets have to offer. This seems like a nice addition to their existing palette. So I'm kind of curious, I guess it would include more metallics, like more colors with a metallic added to them, which I mean, I'm not particularly interested in that myself because we can kind of mix a lot of our metallics from these included here. In fact, in my opinion, we don't even really need the light gold. It just seems to be uh, a less pigmented version of the darker gold. is like an early 90s nightmare. So I'm going to let this dry and uh, then we'll work on saying our goodbyes. Alright friends, so it's been probably another 30 minutes. It's not entirely dry. There is some pooling going on. Again, Louisiana humidity and today is a particularly humid one. But I think this will give you guys a bit of an idea of how these paints layer and perform. Now to be fair, this is on a cellulose paper. This is not a cotton rag paper. I find that cotton rag papers do tend to hold on to the pigments a little bit better than cellulose papers. So that's the purple and the green together turns to mud. But um, I look forward to seeing you guys again when I do the field test for these watercolors. I hope this video was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. I hope it gives you guys a bit of an idea of how the CAC watercolors handle. And uh, I hope in the future I can do a comparative video with the regular or traditional Sakura Koi pan watercolors. And I look forward to seeing you guys when I do the field test with these. It's probably going to end up being very Lisa Frank. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you are interested in watercolor tips, tricks, and tutorials, as well as reviews, please consider subscribing to my channel. I do a lot of watercolor content, and this was done to celebrate World Watercolor Month. If you enjoy how I handle videos like this, you should also consider checking out my comic tutorials also here on this channel. And if you're looking for a little bit more information, something more in depth, or if you're interested in making watercolor comics, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again really soon with another fantastic videos, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, guys.